so good morning, uh, Dr. Feltz. Thanks for uh, being with us. Good morning. Um, uh, for all of our listeners out there, Dr. Feltz is a uh, distinguished professor of kinesiology at Michigan State uh, University. Uh, she's a sport and exercise uh, psychologist, uh, where she studies the psychosocial aspects of sport and physical activity. Uh, she's, for the past about 30 years, has been doing research uh, in or involving self-efficacy, uh, and you're also interested in group dynamics and uh, motivation in, in general. Uh, is that about right? That's, that's, that's perfect. Great, great. And... Uh, even uh, more recently, you've been doing some stuff with uh, some research with virtual partners, virtual exercise partners, and uh, video games. That sounds really cool. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, self efficacy theory. Okay. Um, and so uh, maybe, maybe you could just start by telling us a little bit about um, you know, what self efficacy is, and we'll kind of take it from there. Sure. I think uh, the best way to describe self-efficacy as a, is as a can-do belief. Uh, that is one's self-belief in how efficacious, um, how effective one, one can be at achieving a particular goal. Okay. And um, um, efficacy is, you know, for... For people who don't really understand the concept of efficacy, could you explain a little bit more about what that what that term sort of means? Sure. When when um, uh, people think of uh, or maybe have heard the term efficacy, it's the efficacy of a drug, for instance. Okay. And the efficacy of a drug is how effective that drug is in doing what it's supposed to do. The efficacy of a particular uh, treatment. Uh, how effective that treatment is. Right. So if one just applies that to oneself, then it's how effective one's self is in being able to do something, accomplish accomplish something. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where the, the efficacy part comes from. I uh, use the term self-confidence as... Um, a synonym for self-efficacy, and although there are some who say that there's a difference here, in reality, when we go to measure self-efficacy, we ask the people how confident are they, uh, or how confident do they think they are at being able to do a particular task, you know, whatever it is, or uh, accomplish a particular goal. So, essentially, I think in practice, a self-confidence belief is the same as a self-efficacy belief. Okay. Okay. And um, now, self-efficacy is a little bit different than different than uh, what this other this other construct that we hear a lot about, which is um, uh, self-esteem. Right. So, what what's the sort of real difference there? Right. So, in some of these other self beliefs. Uh, they are not a, about uh, an achievement uh, uh, context, okay. so they don't they don't necessarily involve goal striving. Self esteem is essentially um, a belief about one's self worth, uh, an opinion about one's one's self, and it doesn't necessarily have to do anything with accomplishing something. Uh, but how uh, how um, worthy do I think I, I am? Uh, and I can feel very worthy um, about myself mm -hmm. and not have um, any confidence at all in being able to uh, to sink a golf putt. Okay. Okay. Or I could have a lot of confidence about being able to do something in a particular area but not think very highly of myself as a person. Okay, okay. So, um, so, so it sounds like the real th one of the one of the uh, real central parts, uh, one of the key aspects of self as you're as you're saying, is this idea of achievement. You know, um, there has to be sort of some goal in mind 
for self-efficacy to make sense. Right, some achievement striving. Uh, some achievement striving. So now you, you mentioned this, this idea of, uh, about achieving in sport, so sinking a golf uh, putt. Now a lot, of, uh, a lot of health professionals are interested in how uh, self-efficacy can be applied to, say, uh, exercise. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that. You know, how does self-efficacy matter for, uh, for those kinds of contexts? Okay. Well, self-efficacy um, in in general and um, uh, and in exercise, because that would be a, um, an achievement context, it is about the uh, choices. It affects the choices that one makes, uh, the effort um, in that choice in pursuing that choice, and the persistence and in staying with it even in the face of some barriers. So if one has um, uh, a high degree of, of self-efficacy at, at being able to in, engage in uh, uh, an exercise program, mm -hmm. um, then they, they would choose that, that program um, rather than maybe, maybe something else or, or maybe they would initiate it rather than not even uh, trying to initiate it. And we would call that uh, self-regulatory. Uh, efficacy. Okay. And so, so there's different kinds of efficacy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So there's the uh, task self-efficacy, and that's do I think that I can um, uh, bench press a particular weight, mm -hmm. uh, and do I think I can do um, ten repetitions of that, uh, and do I think I can do three sets uh, of that? So that would all be about uh, task. Uh, self-regulatory would be do I think that I can engage in a weight, weight training regimen uh -huh. uh, over the next several months? Can I, can I find the time to do this? Um, can I ad adhere to it? Um, can I re regulate my behavior? Okay. That, and that sounds, th those all sound like really important skills. And so where does, uh, does self-efficacy uh, come from? Like how would you t how would you help somebody be become more efficacious in, in doing those things? Yeah. So within Bandura's theory of self-efficacy, he talks about four categories of sources of, of information. Okay. And there can be lots of sources of information, but they basically fit under these four. Past performance accomplishments. And these are based on one's own mastery attempts. So if you've been successful before no. in terms of engaging in exercise, if you've bench pressed a particular weight before, uh -huh. you're going to be more likely to have the confidence to be able to do it again. Right. Maybe done, you've I've not done, done, done it. So I've proven are, to myself that I've, I've proven to myself that I that I can do it. So I should make sense. That I would be confident that I could do it again. That's that's right. Yeah. That's right. Because you're a pretty dependable source of of information. Uh, about yourself. Usually. Usually. <laughs> the second category is what we would call vicarious experiences. Okay. And maybe you've never tried this before, so how do you know whether you can do it or not? Mm -hmm. Well, you try to gain information from other people, uh, from vicarious sources. Uh, you might engage in social comparison. Uh, so uh, this this uh, woman is um, lifting this many pounds, bench pressing this many pounds, and uh, she uh, doesn't look like she's any stronger than I am. If she can do it, uh, then I think I can do it as well. Uh, this this uh, mom um, is finding time in her busy day to exercise three times a week, uh -huh. and uh, with with having four children, you know, all under the age of 12 and a full-time job, if she can do it, uh, I, I should be able to do this as well. So you can get it from uh, other sources. That would be like vicarious kinds of sources. You might even um, imagine yourself. So we would call self-imagery. Uh, engaging in something, and and so uh, if seeing yourself uh, being able to, to do this uh, in your mind uh, could also be a, a source of confidence. 
The third, which is not considered as, uh, as, as strong, but certainly can, can add to uh, sources of, of efficacy information, is persuasion, verbal persuasion and communication. And it's stronger if it's from trusted others, from a credible source. Like, like a coach or something, maybe? Like, like a, a coach. Um, it, could be, um, it could be a parent. Um, it, it could be a, a teacher, uh, any of those kinds of trusted sources that, uh, that say, you know what, you, you can do this. Mm -hmm. And especially if they then provide some, some reasons too. You, you, can, you can do this. You know, I've seen you master other things before. Uh, you have the commitment skills and so on and so on. So that... Um, in addition to some of the other sources, can can sometimes be enough to really provide that that kind of information. Uh, the fourth, uh, Bandura uh, used the the term uh, physiological states and emotional arousal, okay. and he was was basically originally uh, looking at these sources of information for treating all different kinds of cognitive behavioral uh, uh, ways of overcoming phobias okay. and, and different kinds of fears. And so one's anxiety or emotional state uh, of a fear of doing something uh, when combined with not being able to do it, that association would provide a sense of a lack of confidence that one, that one could do this. In the, the sport and exercise area, uh, we're not really talking about fear, you know, so much as um, as whether we can uh, pursue something, uh, continue it, you know, the the intensity and the and and the effort and the, and the persistence. And so I've added physical con different kinds of physical condition. If one's fatigued. That, that provides a source of information that uh, maybe I'm not as confident I can I can do this. Okay. If one is experienced pain, um, I'm starting to get sore, right. and I don't think I can I can go another mile. Right, right. Uh, so that can be a yeah. And it sounds like maybe uh, it's your perception of that information. Uh, as well, right? And your perception, of, of course, it's your perception of the information, uh, certainly. And you, then your um, physical training. How, uh, how physically fit do you feel you are? So not only just fatigue, but going into, into this, uh, do you feel like you are physically prepared uh, to, to do this? Okay. okay. And so, yeah. Let me yeah. See, uh, um, well, we had a good we had a good run there. I mean, we were going for. A, we did, we did. Now I can't see your face. Okay, can you see me now? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so where did where did I cut out? <laughs> uh, you you cut out with the um, uh, uh, so if these are kind of the sources of information, um, uh, can we use these sources to help people improve their self efficacy? Right. Right. So. So the idea, though, I guess first maybe is that self-efficacy um, has a direct link with behavior, right? If I, if, if we can kind of chew on uh, on all the stuff that that we've been just talking about, self-efficacy is um, is has a direct link with behavior. If you're not efficacious about something, then then you're probably less likely to to do it. Yes. And um, and the way to become more efficacious is to sort of um, go through these, um, provide the information that tells you that you're uh, efficacious. Right. And, and maybe maybe that's a too simplified sort of version of that. But um, when when I think about uh, you know uh, interventions, which is um, a, a big part of, of uh, health promotion, uh, helping people become uh, more physically active. Um, how does how does self-efficacy uh, theory help people, you know, design uh, interventions? How do you see that sort of getting played out? 